Welcome to the channel Tribe. This episode is part of our webinar series, Tribecast. In this episode we are having, Jonathan Lips, talking on the topic, Appium Desktop and Appium Inspector, Invaluable Tools for Test Development. Now coming to this particular webinar, we are hosting the amazing Jonathan Lips, popularly known as J Lips. This is the second time we are hosting him. Uh, the last time we hosted him, we were we were surprised with, you know, a song which he which he sang for us along with you know if i remember it right here uh, along with a good guitar performance i don't know what we have in store today but yeah today's <laughs> webinar is about apm desktop and inspector and uh, jonathan is uh, director learning and education at headspin then uh, he is a project lead of a very popular open source mobile automation tool of apm and then he is author at apm pro so with that, I'll allow, allow Jonathan to introduce him further and let's get started. Over to you, Jonathan. Thanks for, Thanks so much, uh, coming over again. And it's always a pleasure hosting you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's great to be here. I, I do remember, uh, the last time I was with you all and I did play some music. That was a bit of a, yeah. uh, an impromptu surprise. Um, uh, I don't have anything planned today. I don't even have my instruments here at the office at the moment. Okay. Um, but we can uh, we can all enjoy the the song of of uh, software, I suppose, together. Um, maybe not yeah. as, as entertaining. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Um, so yeah, I I have a slide uh, on myself, but Mahesh already hit the highlights. Um, I've been working on the Appium uh, open source project for, um, gosh, it's uh, been. 10, no, I don't know, eight, nine years, something like that, ever since the beginning. And uh, I now work at Headspin, which is uh, an, an automation um, platform, cloud service that that is built on top of Appium and um, other technologies. And um, haven't been too up on this recently, but I'm the author of the Appium Pro um, blog and, and newsletter. Uh, I've not been publishing newsletters um, the last few months because I've been working really hard on Appium 2.0, um, which is something that we're going to talk a little bit about in um, today's demo. Uh, so I look forward to Appium 2.0 coming out and uh, getting back in the swing of things, uh, writing articles. But I definitely recommend you check out appiumpro.com if you haven't yet, because um, there's you know well over 100 articles there on topics relating to Appium, uh, many of which are still uh, really useful. And uh, I'm constantly hearing from people how they found something there in the list of topics that um, they were hoping to find and really help them with a the problem they had in their automation. So that's Appium Pro. But today, uh, we are going to be talking about Appium Desktop and Appium Inspector. And um, I put both of these uh, together. Uh, it used to be just one thing called Appium Desktop. And now it's two things called Appium Desktop and Appium Inspector. Um, so first of all, let's just have a few slides on what these things are in case you haven't used them. Uh, I figure most people who use Appium have used these tools at this point. Um, but you know, maybe some of you are here who haven't even used Appium before. Um, and so Appium Desktop and Appium Inspector are some of the most uh, important essential tools um, that will make your life easier uh, when it comes to writing your automation scripts. So um, Appium Desktop is basically just an Appium server that you can run without going to your command line and using NPM and Node.js to uh, download install and activate an Appium server. So it's a, an application that works on uh, Mac and Windows and Linux operating systems that you can you know, open like any other application and starts an Appium server. And again, if you're kind of new to Appium, the Appium server is the thing that your automation scripts need to talk to in order to actually make automation happen. So it's the most kind of essential component of your Appium setup. One of the nice things about Appium Desktop is that when you download it, it comes with everything that you need. It even comes with 
Node.js, which is the, the runtime that Appium server uses. Um, so it, it's kind of nice if you're on a new system and don't have all of those things installed. Um, I definitely recommend using the command line version of Appium if you can. Um, there's a lot more flexibility to it, uh, as we'll talk about a little bit. But Appium Desktop, the application that I'm talking about here, is still a really useful tool if you just want to very quickly launch an Appium server. And that's basically it. So we'll see a demo of this in a moment, but that's all really there is to know about um, Appium Desktop. Appium Inspector, on the other hand, um, has a lot more going on with it. Um, Appium Inspector basically is a graphical Appium client or a, a GUI graphical user interface Appium client. So if you've written Appium scripts before, um, let's say you've written them in Java or maybe Python or Ruby, you've used an Appium client, something that you import into your code that gives you the ability to start Appium sessions, find elements, and uh, interact with those elements using all of the special commands that these client libraries give to you. Um, Appium Inspector is basically just the same as one of those client libraries, but it's wrapped up in a nice graphical interface. So instead of writing code to start a session, you enter some capabilities into text fields and click a button. Um, and instead of calling the command, you know, uh, find element by such and such locator strategy uh, using such and such selector, there's a nice graphical way of just transparently clicking on an element in the UI hierarchy, and that's how you find it. Um, and, and so on. So we'll see an example because it's uh, much more straightforward to see than to hear me talk about. But basically, when you start a session with the Appium Inspector, you get a screenshot and an XML source tree, kind of like you're familiar with from web development when you open up a web page and you want to see what's going on under the hood with that website, you can open up the developer tools that come with your web browser. And this will show you, you know, the HTML source and allow you to click around and uh, inspect various things and, and so on. Um, this is basically the equivalent for uh, your mobile applications that you're testing with Appium, of course, from the perspective of, of Appium, not from the perspective of, let's say, tools that are internal uh, to mobile operating system um, functions or applications. So um, yeah, Appium Inspector is basically a way to manually inspect and explore your application from the perspective of Appium commands. So again, it doesn't give you the ability to do anything that Appium itself can't do because at the end of the day, it's just an Appium client. But it makes it easy to kind of poke around your application, figure out what elements you can interact with and how you might find those elements in code. Um, so it's a really good tool when you are uh, especially initially building out um, your page object models for a new application or trying to understand how automating a user flow might work with Appium. Because if you can um, manually make that user flow work with the inspector, then you know you'll be able to write an Appium script in code to do the same thing. So we'll see some of its features here in a moment, but um, Appium Inspector comes with a lot of different interesting features like a uh, even a, a recorder, so you can perform actions and then um, Appium Inspector can record that and, and show you kind of the code that you might uh, run to replay those commands. Um, the ability to detect a hybrid or web contexts, and uh, you get access to basically the entire set of Appium commands, even the more esoteric ones. So that's basically the conceptual introduction. Uh, and now let's move uh, into demo for the rest of the session. So let's first get a few things set up here. 
So what I have currently on screen is the Appium desktop server. So this is the first of the two applications that we're going to consider today. Um, there is a website for this, which you can go to if you search for Appium desktop. Um, I guess I can just show you where it is for posterity. If you go to GitHub, dot com slash appium slash appium desktop you'll get to the home page here um, and you can download the latest version of appium desktop from the releases i will say that uh, the readme on this project and on the inspector project are not up to date um, i'm going to be working on that actually probably today um, so hopefully it will be up to date soon, but there are some things that, that need fixing there. But just to say that when you want to actually download Appium Desktop, uh, you can come here and find the latest release and you can download the release for your particular platform. Okay, so this is the Appium Desktop application. When you open it up, you're greeted with uh, two fields, host, and port. Um, and if I want to just use these um, default values here, the same default values that Appium itself uses for starting a server, I can simply click the Start Server button. Uh, it also tells me which version of the Appium server is bundled with this version of Appium Desktop. So I can do that. And then I get a nice little console here uh, that shows me any of the logs that the Appium server um, is producing. So that's basically it. At this point, I could uh, you know, execute a test script against this Appium server the same way I would against an Appium server running on the command line. Um, if I want, I can get the you know, raw logs as a text file, and I can stop the server. Uh, in the past, you would uh, open up an inspector session right from here. Um, but the inspector, as this tooltip is saying, is now released as a separate application. Um, so we'll look at that in a bit. Um, so I can stop the server and close the log window if I want as well. Uh, something that you might find yourself needing to do is to set up some configuration for the server to work appropriately. This is because um, Appium assumes that certain environment variables are set with appropriate values, especially for Android automation. Uh, for example, the Android home or Java home environment variables. And because this is a graphical uh, application, it doesn't always pick up the environment variables that um, are exported or set whenever you open up uh, a terminal window. So you have to set those manually if those aren't um, picked up automatically. So you can do that in the configurations here. Um, there's an advanced tab that lets you actually select a bunch of different options. Uh, these are kind of like the command line flags that you could normally pass to the Appium server if you wanted. Um, for example, allowing um, cross-origin requests to the server or allowing sessions to clobber one another, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, but by and large, you may not need these, so it's typically easiest just to go with the simple view. Uh, if you want, you can also save um, presets. So if you have a bunch of custom flags that you like setting on your Appium server, um, you can save a preset from uh, this window here. So that's basically it for um, Appium Desktop. You'll notice that the server version, which is included here, is uh, a, a little bit older. Um, so sometimes it takes a bit of work to get an Appium server version included in Appium Desktop for a variety of reasons. Um, you'll also notice that it's not Appium 2.0, which has been in beta for a long time and will be released soon. Um, so I just want to say that we are uh, planning on supporting Appium 2.0 from Appium Desktop. It's a little bit more complex because Appium version one um, basically bundles all of the drivers, the iOS driver, the Android driver, and so on, into um, the Appium package itself. So when we put Appium one into Appium Desktop, it comes with all of the, uh, the drivers that you might need. Whereas with Appium 
there's a lot more flexibility to um, drivers. And we also have things called plugins, um, which didn't exist in Appium 1. And you can install drivers and plugins from basically anywhere on the internet. And you can upgrade them or you know uh, have different versions of them within the same Appium server and so on. So we need to build a kind of interface for doing all of those types of things um, with Appium 2.0 as part of Appium Desktop. So we are planning on doing that. It's just not ready yet. So unfortunately, I can't demonstrate it here. Um, but keep your eyes open for that because we definitely want uh, to support the Appium Desktop use case for people who are using Appium 2.0. And of course, we want everybody to be using Appium 2.0. Okay. So that's it for uh, Appium Desktop. Now let's talk about Appium Inspector, um, which I can start launching here. Uh, so again, this is now its own application. You see it now has its own uh, really beautiful icon that I made. Um, you know, it's incredible that I chose to be a, an engineer instead of a designer um, with those kinds of design skills, really. Um, so anyway, when it, when it, uh, launches, what we get is something that um, we can call the, the new session window or the start session window or something like this. And basically, this window enables us to tell uh, the Appium server what kind of session we want to start, the same way that in code, when you start an Appium automation script, um, you set up a bunch of desired capabilities, and you also define where the script uh, should go in terms of the Appium server. So are you talking to a local Appium server? Are you talking to um, a cloud provider? Something like this. Um, so with this window, we're able to select from either, you know, uh, an Appium server that is running anywhere, basically, uh, that we can define using the uh, host and the port. Um, and then, of course, we also need a path for the remote server. Uh, in the past and with Appium uh, 1.0, um, you would use the path of slash WD slash hub. Um, but with Appium 2.0, you just use a path of slash the WD slash hub uh, endpoint is kind of obsolete. Um, so that's the current default in Appium Inspector. So basically up here with my host port and path, details, I'm saying I want to talk to an Appium server running on localhost, port 4723, and with a remote path. So now is a great time for me to make sure that I actually have an Appium server running there. And of course, I could use the server included with Appium Desktop, but I want to use um, Appium 2.0 because that's what I use nowadays. So I'm going to actually start up an Appium 2 server uh, here on the command line. Um, I'm actually running my local development version of Appium, um, but it's basically the same as the uh, 13th beta of Appium 2. Um, so that's the version of Appium that I'm running. You'll see that my local version of Appium has the XCUI test driver installed at this version and something uh, called the Roku driver, which is a, a kind of experimental driver I'm developing at the moment at Headspin to support the uh, Roku platform. Um, so that's not something that uh, you would probably have in your set of drivers, although I'm planning on uh, open sourcing the work on this driver here, uh, maybe even this week. So uh, just as a by the way, if you're interested in automating Roku channels, um, there'll be an Appium driver coming out for that. Uh, anyway. So we now have the Appium server started in my terminal uh, running on you know, the typical port 4723. Um, and so I can now go back to my Appium inspector um, and start a session against it if I wanted, which is great. Um, and just to say, so you can use the Appium inspector against any kind of Appium server. It doesn't need to be the Appium desktop app. It can be a server you have running locally. It can be a server uh, that's somewhere remote. Um, you can even select from a huge list of cloud providers that all have implemented support for um, Appium Inspector here. And when you select one of these, uh, the inspector will show you options that are specific to each of those cloud providers. Um, there are also some advanced settings if you want um, 
to check out those. Uh, usually don't need need those for my cases. And then down here to start a session, we obviously need to have some capabilities. Um, so you know, if we wanted to start a session on, let's say iOS, um, I could do something like say, well, I want uh, my platform name to be iOS, and I want my device name to be iPhone 11. Uh, what other capabilities do I need? Uh, oh, I need platform version. So I think I've got the iOS 14.4 SDK currently active on my machine. Uh, I also need my application. Um, so I know that I have an app, uh, my iOS version of my test app here. And I'm gonna go ahead and also set the no reset capability to true. And you can see that we can actually change the type of our capabilities here. So when I need a Boolean value, that's how I do that. And oh, because we're dealing with Appium 2, I also definitely need an automation name capability, which in this case is gonna be XUI test. Um, okay, so this is cool. If I wanted, I could, if I'm gonna you know, be starting lots of sessions using these types of capabilities, I could save them. Um, you know, I could test try webinar demo, give it a name. Um, and then those sets of capabilities could be saved. So now I can actually look at my saved capability sets. Um, this is one I was working with before. It's actually, I think, basically the same capabilities. And here's our test tribe webinar demo. And if I want, I can always go back and edit these. Once I've got my capabilities set, I can start a session. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, you can see that immediately my Appium server here starts viewing out logs because you know we are using it. So that's, of course, what it's going to do. Once we have an active session, um, we get this beautiful window here, which gives us a screenshot of the application. On the left-hand side, the application source in the middle, and then the selected element pane on the right. Now, before we get into working with this, uh, I want to talk about uh, the few different kinds of um, element interaction modes that we have. So that's this little middle set of buttons up here. We have a mode where we can select elements, a mode where we can uh, swipe on the screen, and a mode where we can tap by coordinates. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just pull up my actual simulator here and try and Put it on the screen a little bit so you can see what's happening. Of course, we can interact with the simulator if we need to. Um, I'm going to get into, let's see, um, a list here. So at least you know we can see if we try and scroll something on it. And if I do something on the simulator and I uh, you know don't see that reflected in the inspector, that's because the inspector, um, in order to sort of you know, conserve network requests and make sure extraneous things aren't happening in the session doesn't automatically uh, update because it doesn't know that I've done something in the simulator. So if I want to get it to reflect the most current state, I can click the refresh button here. And now you can see um, we're at parity with the what's going on in the simulator. So, um, you know, let's first try tapping just by coordinates. This basically just gives me the ability to you know, tap at an X and Y position. So for example, if I wanted to tap on this element which says Cirrus here, I could do that. And then you can see over here that we've already got uh, the response in the simulator. But then uh, we see that I picked the right thing here. So I can also just tap on the OK button to get back to this list. Uh, and if I want to swipe, it's really easy. I just basically click once where I want to start swiping, and I click again where I want to stop, and Appium will perform it. You can see it actually did the thing over here. Now, this device is tall enough that uh, the list scroll position itself doesn't change because all list items are on the screen, but you saw that the swipe took effect over here in the simulator itself. Um, let's go back to, oops, I don't want to swipe. Well, a very small swipe on that. It was basically the same as a tap, so that did what I want. Um, now let's talk about 
element um, interaction mode, uh, or sorry, select element mode, I suppose. When you are in this mode, Appium uh, Inspector will actually try and figure out where each element is within the screenshot and draw a nice little highlight box for you. So for example, if I want to get to the login screen, I uh, can click on this element. Now, clicking on this element doesn't trigger a click on the element in the app. Basically, it just selects the element within the inspector itself, um, because I might want to look at all of this uh, information that it provides about the element. Right. So um, when we have an element selected, there's a bunch of things that we can do over here in the selected element um, pane. Uh, we can interact with the element using these buttons. So these are your basic element interaction buttons, tap, send keys, or clear. These other two are uh, a little more advanced we can talk about in a minute. Um, so let's just you know tap on this element by clicking tap. And you can see that we get to uh, the next view in the application. So now I'm going to select uh, a new element. This is the username uh, text field. Um, and you can see how we can send keys here. So I can say, um, username is, let's say, Alice. And uh, the simulator actually typed in Alice. Um, and then you can try the password, which for this application is my password. And so that is taking place here. Uh, the source or the screenshot didn't quite catch the update there, so I can always refresh. Um, oh, and I think iOS now has a security feature where when you get screenshots, it doesn't show you how many dots uh, long the password is for security purposes. So that's why there's a discrepancy here. But um, kind of one of the really great things about the selected element pane is that Appium Inspector will actually recommend to you um, locator strategies for finding that particular element, and it will recommend selectors. So um, if we want to try and log in, for example, let's select the login button. And um, Appium Inspector gives me two options for trying to find the login button. It gives me an iOS class chain locator strategy and an XPath locator strategy. Um, so I can use you know, either one in my script, and it should theoretically find the same element. Now, there are some trade-offs between locator strategies, as you might know. Um, some of them might be faster, some of them might be slower because they use different technologies under the hood. So if you're curious, you know, which of these locator strategies might be more efficient in your test script, you can come up here and click the Get Timing button. And that will actually um, execute both of these locator strategies and try and figure out how long each one takes uh, to return. So in this case, you can see that using the iOS class chain strategy only takes about 280 milliseconds, whereas the XPath strategy took almost a full second and a half. So there's a, a whole order of magnitude difference um, in the efficiency of these particular uh, selectors and strategies. So you know this might suggest to you that you might want to use one or the other in your test. Of course, there's always trade-offs because uh, as again, you might know, the iOS class chain locator strategy is not cross-platform. Um, so you're going to be looking at uh, you know, conditional logic or conditional page object models in your test suite if you're automating also an Android application. Uh, but anyway, that's how you use the, the get timing feature. So let's go ahead and finish logging in to hopefully uh, show how we could kind of walk through uh, a concrete user flow and use this element pane here to give us really good information uh, about how we might want to interact with those elements in our scripts. Of course, anytime you have a selected element, um, you can look at all of the um, attributes that are available to find on that element if you want. OK, um, what's next? So that's uh, finding and interacting with elements. Let's talk about what I would consider to be a few of the more advanced features of Appium Desktop. Um, so first of all, let's just uh, kind of get back to a normal state here in the application. 
And you know, we can also, instead of clicking on the back button here, we can also click the back button up here, which runs the Appium back command. Um, I could hopefully do that until I get back to my home screen. There we are. Great. Um, now let's talk about Appium Inspector's recorder. So this little eye icon here allows you to start recording. Um, so let's click this and see what it does. So it opens up this recorder window and it says perform some actions to, sh to see code show up here. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and try and, and walk through the flow we just did. So I'll tap on login screen. I will send keys to these fields with the appropriate values. And tap here. And uh, my app may have a bug in it because I tapped that button, but we didn't log in. Let's try again. <laughs> Maybe it takes two. Oh, looks like I actually clicked the password, not the, uh, that makes sense. Okay, cool. All right, um, now to close out this flow, we will tap the logout button. So you can see that as I performed each of these actions, I got code that was generated here to represent uh, what, what I was doing. Um, so theoretically, this is code that I could copy and paste uh, into my own test script that would, that would work. Um, of course, copying and pasting is always a bit dangerous. You have to do it uh, with understanding of the context, with understanding that the kind of code that we can generate here in this recorder um, is not going to be uh, you know, following a lot of good code design practices and whatnot. But anyway, it shows you how you can at least find this element using driver.element or what have you. Um, you can also change the language or framework that's being used. So if you're more of a Java person, you can use Java and it will show you Java code. And if you wanted to say, take all of this code and wrap it up into what's hopefully a fully working um, script, you can go over here and click show hide boilerplate code. And this will put in all of the appropriate kind of imports and you know class stuff and setup stuff and everything that you need in order to potentially just copy this into a, a .java file and, and maybe run it. Um, so again, we don't recommend this as a way to kind of generate production ready code but as a way to turn your Appium Inspector explorations into something um, that helps you learn more about the client library that you'll be using to write your scripts, I think it's a, a really cool feature. Uh, and if you want, of course, you can you know, copy all that code to the clipboard um, and ultimately we can clear actions if we want to start over. So that's the recorder. Uh, another interesting feature is um, the ability to search for an element um, on our own. So this is a particularly useful feature when you have a test script that you've been running and it fails because an element couldn't be found. And you're thinking to yourself, well, that element should exist. In fact, it even looks like it's there on the screenshot, um, but Appium is telling me it's not found. So uh, one thing I like to do is open up the inspector, get to that point in the application, and then manually enter the locator strategy and select our details to see if indeed Appium can find it. So for example, um, you know, let's try and find an element by accessibility ID called doesn't exist. Um, and you can see that we could not find any elements matching that. So let's try again. Um, maybe we have an element with the accessibility ID of login on it because there's a button there with the, the name login. And in fact, we found one, we found one element. So now if I want, I can actually click on uh, one of these found elements and then interact with it just like I could from the selected element pane. So I could 
you know, uh, you know, say, okay, well, I found this element, but uh, maybe in my script, when I tap on it, it doesn't do anything. So let's try and tap on it here. And in fact, it didn't do anything. So that could make me think, hmm, maybe the actual element that I want is somehow wrapped underneath that one. Maybe that's why it's not receiving the tap. Uh, and in fact, if I go over here to the login button, well, it looks like Appium Inspector isn't recommending that I find it by accessibility ID. Um, and that is you know, really interesting because um, you would think that the thing with the accessibility ID on it would have the tap handler. But if I kind of explore the, um, ah, well, actually, the thing with the accessibility ID of login is actually this, um, this label here. So the button actually has a different accessibility ID, which is login button. But you'll notice that both it and a sort of, you know, random parent element both have the same accessibility ID. So this accessibility ID is unfortunately not unique based on how I designed the application. Um, and I thought I designed it well, but you know, some framework that I'm using or who knows what decided to uh, include the same accessibility ID on two elements. So that's why Appium Inspector is not recommending that I use this accessibility ID anywhere because it would be ambiguous uh, which element I'm referring to. So anyway, that's the kind of thing we can do with the um, search for element feature. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, uh, well, I guess the second to last thing is um, our native versus uh, web or hybrid context mode. So let's go back to um, the main page of the app here. And I'm getting to something called uh, the web view demo which basically lets me load up um, a web page inside of here. Um, one thing to know about um, hybrid context on iOS, uh, if you haven't run into this yourself, is that sometimes you actually have to interact with the uh, web view before it shows up in the context list. So I just did a little scroll here. You can also do this via code. You can just kind of tap anywhere in it. Um, or I can use Appium Desktop to do that. But let me refresh my source here. So in this uh, source, you can see that I have access to some of the elements within the web view. Um, if I click on one of them, you can see that these show up as native elements. And that's pretty good because uh, basically what, what Apple does is um, finds links and important elements within uh, web views and promotes them to kind of first class iOS elements. But I'm not actually looking with, uh, I'm not actually looking at an HTML source, even though that's how this Appium Pro web page is built. Uh, so something I can do is I can go over here to web hybrid app mode, and then Appium Inspector will try and discover if there are any web context available. And oh, the, uh, the web context picker was not showing up. Maybe, oh, maybe I need to refresh my, uh, Yeah, there we go. Sorry, I needed to do a, a refresh. Um, so you can see when I do a refresh in web and hybrid mode, I actually get a little picker here that lets me choose whether I want to be in native mode or um, talking to the web view. So I'm going to choose to talk to the web view. And then basically, the app source that I see will be the HTML source of this. Um, there's a little bit room for improvement here in how we display this. This is a pretty new feature. So it's a little bit hard to kind of walk through this particular um, hierarchy. But for example, if I click on one of these, I can see that uh, the XPath locator that's recommended is actually the um, you know, web-based XPath locator. So this would not work if I were not in um, web mode, but let's try and tap on this link wherever this goes. And sure enough, it's a link that opened up my 
uh, my menu here. So you can see that we are actually engaging uh, directly with the web view, kind of ignoring the native context. Uh, and if we want, we can go back to the native mode and start interacting with native elements again. Okay, so that's the um, web hybrid mode. I'm gonna go back to native mode. The last thing I wanna share is just that there's this tab here called actions. And basically it gives you access to uh, the kind of kitchen sink, uh, you know, grab bag, everything else that you can do with an Appium client. Um, so these actions are divided somewhat arbitrarily into groups. So for example, if I click session, then I get a bunch of uh, commands I can run. So, you know, I could set the geolocation or get the geolocation or set or get the orientation. For example, let's get the current orientation. Um, it is portrait. Okay, that makes sense. Or um, let's get, you know, the session capabilities that are reported by session uh, when we ask what kind of session details there are. And um, this is the result. Appium responds with all of this information if you call the get session details command. Um, so basically, you can kind of go through here and um, see all of the types of actions that are available. Uh, if we wanted, we could even call an execute script. So um, I don't know what's a good one, mobile scroll, if I can correctly remember the arguments, something like direction down, you know, so you have to just put the random JSON in here. I wonder what this will try and scroll, but um, we'll see. Oh, it's scrolling the website. That's kind of what I would have hoped to have happened. So uh, our result is null, which just means it worked. Um, but you can see that uh, we can call execute script from here as well. So that's actions. Basically, again, it lets you just, uh, you know, run all of the special Appium commands that, um, you know, you would, you would call from your Appium client that don't have a home within this user interface anywhere else. Okay, so when you're done inspecting, you can go ahead and quit the session and close the inspector. And that is Appium Inspector. If you want to um, download Appium Inspector yourself, you can go to github.com slash appium slash appium dash inspector. And this is the, the uh, GitHub page for it. Again, uh, the readme needs to be filled out um, with a little bit more of a description about what this application does, but I've just told you what it does. So um, you can come here and um, I'm having a little trouble uh, publishing versions of Appium Inspector right now. So um, the release that's currently available is a little bit older, a little bit behind uh, what, I've, what I've got, but um, it is still totally working. And now uh, the very last uh, thing that I wanted to show you was a really cool development in uh, the world of Appium Inspector, which is, um, I'll just show you, if you go to inspector.appiumpro.com in your web browser, I mean, and you can do this right now if you want, um, what you see is actually the Appium Inspector. So I, I didn't, you know, I can quit this. I didn't load it up. I just went to a URL and I have a fully functional Appium Inspector here. Uh, so this is actually pretty amazing because you could go and download a several hundred megabyte application to run the inspector, or you could just go to this link on appiumpro.com in your web page or in your web browser. Uh, and, and here you have it. So all the same details. Um, I have a save capability set. Um, let me let me run uh, a test on basically the same app that we had before. Um, and actually, I'm, I'm going to try and run it. It's, it's going to fail, and I'm going to explain why. So let me hit Start Session. And it said, could not connect to server. Are you sure it's running? It's like, well, um, yes, it is running, because I've been talking to it. Uh, now, there's a, there's a security feature that web browsers have um, called CORS, C-O-R-S. It's always hard to remember what it stands for. I think it's cross-origin request scripting source. I don't know. Anyway, look up CORS. Uh, you can read more about it. But basically, the web browser will refuse to connect to um, another uh, server on a different address unless that server explicitly allows connecting to it in that way. So we can make the Appium server 
uh, allow connecting to it um, by passing the dash dash allow cores um, flag to it. And now, uh, once that server is all loaded up, uh, I can try this session again. And I didn't immediately get an error, which is great. And here in a second, I've got my inspector window. So, um, you know, this basically works exactly the same as um, I didn't reset the application. So it's all there. This works exactly the same as the app that you've downloaded would. And um, here in the header, it tells you which version of the inspector you're you're getting when you come to this website. So um, I think this is really awesome. I've found it nice to not have to load up an application and just go to a website and just use the inspector. Um, another you know cool thing is that this also works on cloud providers. So for example, I have a uh, headspin set up, and if I use this set of um, <laughs> headspin capabilities, I can actually try and start a session on a remote cloud um, just for my web browser without having Appium or anything else downloaded on my computer. And I can uh, inspect the application and record and all these things. So here's you know, uh, an Android, uh, the Android settings application running on an Android device in the Headspin cloud. So I don't have this device connected to my computer at all. And again, this is all happening from within the web. So um, I think this is pretty cool. I haven't really announced this uh, publicly. Um, it's been a little bit a little bit on the down low, um, but I wanted to kind of announce it at this webinar. So it might have some bugs, but I hope everyone goes and checks it out. And if you find anything amiss with it, um, please create an issue at the repo on GitHub. So I'll close that session. And um, I guess I'll just briefly flash my thank you slide. That's the uh, that's the the end of my presentation on Appium Desktop and Appium Inspector.